Last week, something big happened. We managed to fit a Predator 670 in our 3D printed prototype. Look at that, it fits, Sam. It's perfect. Then we received our parts kit from Go Power Sports and dropped it off at the shop so Tom could finally start building the first ever MBK1. And this week, the journey continues because today we're building the first official component of the MBK1, and that's actually gonna be the swing arm. So in order to get started, we need to use the tube bender right here. Somebody asked me, and maybe you can respond on my behalf, they said, why don't I just buy a manual tube bender and do it myself? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> clearly, I, I challenge is, you. Yeah, clearly the amount of, at like, A, your experience, but B, it's so intricate. There would be no way for me to do this by, like, with this design, I don't think it would be ever possible to do it with a manual there's tube a, bender. There's an awful lot to it from the fact that, um, first off, there's more to it than tube bending. Yeah. You need a tube bender, and then you need all the welding equipment. You need fish mouthing fixtures. You need cutoff saws. You need lathes to bore it. Um, if you want to go and buy a tube bender, I challenge you to go and buy a tube bender. It's not as easy as it may appear, even though it doesn't appear to be that easy. The other possibility is, is that you might want to get a tube bender. You might want to eventually, and and you know, yeah, for simple things like the handlebars. Yeah, you can do it degrees. all. Do it and seriously. I mean, if you if you want to get into business, get into business. Well, like I said, when you when you're ready to retire, if this That'd is for sale, thurs Thursday. 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 Uh. Guys, what are we going to do? <laughs> so we just kind of went over somewhat of a game plan of what we're going to be doing today. And yeah. Tom's going to cut a couple more tubes. And then we're going to jump on the tube bender and make the official first upper part of the swing arms. These were like two tests just to understand exactly where to bend. We should hopefully make the, the final one today for the first prototype, which is exciting. So here we go. That's if I can find the piece of tubing I just put down. <laughs> Nobody leaves the room. All right. Where did it go? I've done something with it. This happens to us all the time in our basement when we're working. We put a screw down and then it just disappears. There's little thieves that are around. And that's not it. That's not it. Oh, found it. I know why, because I put it away. See what happens when you clean up? I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> See what happens. You, what you want to do is take into consideration the, uh, the the tube itself, like the seam. Yeah, no. yeah. That's the first bend, right? Oh, so we want the yes. we want the seam on the inside of that. Yeah. So um, that would be seam up, and then uh, hopefully it just re remains there. All right. The call is locked. Now it's gonna it's gonna take off back. So don't anybody get upset. Okay. <clears throat> so it goes back to here. There you go. Just like that. You can see this getting close. Wow. Like, like, I mean, it's still a degree out or so, but now these ends are getting better. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're probably within an eighth of an inch. Wow, okay. And on this particular part, that wouldn't matter, but it, it does to me. So now we have to tighten that up, that one degree, which will tweak it. And then the next one we bend, if we bend another one, I think we'll we'll just stay with what we got now. Yeah. But the next time we'll, we'll put a, an extra degree bend in, programmed in, okay. so that it's gonna tweak it. But yeah, that's like almost perfect. I mean, yeah, that's getting close. It's getting really close. Wow. While we were there, the tube bender was actually being upgraded. So we hit pause on bending and we moved on to the pivot tube of the swing arm. So the first step is to measure it so we can see how much more we need to machine it in order for it to be perfect. So that is 11,141 and we want 11,125. So we need to take 16 thou off the end of that. We just got a bit of fuzz, so then we take that, and this is set on zero, so that's the z-axis. So z, we go to zero, and back that off. That's probably a couple of thou. So we're gonna go about six. Are you doing that by eye, or does this tell you exactly how much you've moved it? So you touch it so that it's just touching the end of the tube, and then you zero it there, and then oh, okay. move it 16 thou. Gotcha. Okay. I did 15, because if you can see it, it means you're cutting. Okay. All right, so that's the tubes done. Hey, tubes are done. Tubes are done. So the tube bender is going to take a little bit longer than expected. So we're going to move forward with the neck of the bike. So now what happens is we have to face them like we just did, put a little chamfer on them, get them to the right length, and then we have to bore the end of them to, for the, the cup and cone bearing. Gotcha.
that looks good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so the cup and cone bearing will fit in here nicely. You can kind of see a little lip in there. Man, that is smooth. Wow. That's so cool. Oh, that's beautiful. No, yeah. just kidding. <laughs> so unfortunately, the tube bender will not be done today, but we have some exciting news. See, before we hired the machine shop, a gentleman by the name of Tyler reached out to me on Instagram and he told me he had a CNC machine in his actual garage and he offered to build a front end to test and make sure it works. Oh my gosh, look at this. Wow, it's real. He helped me shape the front end into something that's even better than what the original design was. There are little details that I didn't know when it comes to machining that he was able to educate me on and so now I have the first official ever MBK1 front end prototype that Tyler made for us. So thank you so much for your help. You truly made this a seamless process and you taught me a lot. Oh, and there's something else in here, adapters. Let me, let me clean this up, one second. All right, we finally have officially the first ever MBK1 front end made out of metal, specifically aluminum, and I am just blown away from idea to like real life right here. It is so cool. And the honing finish on this, I know it's not like shiny aluminum, but it actually looks really, really cool. I'm curious if we polished it, what it would look like. So as you can see here, it is really, really cool. The fact that he has a CNC machine in his garage makes me a little jealous, not gonna lie. But this thing is really, really cool. So I'm gonna basically take it all apart, see it and hold each piece individually. All right, so I got a couple pieces off here. These are the sleeve adapters. This allows the handlebars to go through. So we're gonna take that out. Man, these are very small screws. So again, when designing this, you know, what might actually work on paper might not work perfectly in real life, but here we have it. The adapters, which look really cool. This one's a little snug. There we go. Now I gotta do the other side, but I'm too excited. I'm gonna take off these little riser adapter plates because these handlebar riser plates are really cool. Something that I'm very proud of. And I think will definitely allow people to truly customize their MBK1 in a way that they didn't expect because originally we, we didn't even have an idea or an option to put other handlebars on this. But I realize a lot of people want to have different handlebars, different looks and I didn't want to take that away from them. So basically what I'm trying to do is, as you can see, there's these handlebar riser plates and I want to take them out. Even though the screws are out of it, for some reason it's still kind of sticking in there. I don't know if it's because of the honing, but for whatever reason it's kind of stuck in there. But I can push on the top part through there and hopefully this should pop out. So I'm going to give that a try right now. There it is. Look at that. That is so cool. In theory, this should just slide in and out very easily. So, but I guess for the first one, we just gotta do this. There it is. That was much easier. So obviously when building the first prototype, nothing's gonna work perfectly. So I don't know, maybe when you're honing, it actually adds a little bit of a layer. And I just wonder if I were to take some sandpaper or something in here, it would clean this up so that it would actually just fall in there easily. So this is something that obviously we're gonna have to make sure, like there, I got it in, but then it kind of sticks once it's in there. So I wonder if maybe we just have to increase the tolerance just a little bit, because I think what's happening is the moment you put too much pressure on say one side or the other, then it kind of makes it go like this, which then locks it in there. But if you push right in the middle, as you can see, it pops out a lot easier. So I wonder if that was just it. But again, I am thinking about maybe polishing this if it's possible to see what this would look like shiny because my dad loves shine. But oh my gosh, like this is so cool. Let me actually grab one of the original 3D printed parts. Okay, so now for the test. I'm gonna put it all back together and see if it works on the 3D printed prototype frame. All right, I got it all together. And now the moment of truth, will it fit on here? Oh, it's tight. Mm. Oh, there we go. There it is. I'm really happy with it. 
Again, this is the first one and we learned so much from this process that it's not perfect. Obviously it's far from it, but it actually gave me a really good idea of what it's like to just build it, to take it apart, and then how it all fits together nicely. But we do have a couple of ideas. After talking to Tom about the front end was how we can actually reduce the amount of parts so that it will not only be more affordable, but actually stronger. So the way that this works is there's a clamp at the top, then we got this adapter, then we have a sleeve, another adapter, and then the other clamp. And so the one idea Tom had, which I thought was genius, and I can't believe I didn't think of it myself, was instead of having the two adapters and the sleeve as three separate parts, which will cost more, why not just make them all one piece? And so by eliminating the upper and lower adapters for the sleeve, now that part is gonna be much more efficient to manufacture, which will also make it much more affordable, which means that it won't cost as much for us to produce, which means we won't have to sell it for as much. So that made me really excited. But going from 3D printing to physically machining it out of metal, you'll learn a lot and that's why I'm here and that's why I love what we're doing. This is something that I I'm absolutely happy with. So huge shout out again to Tyler. Thank you so much for your help on this. I really, really enjoyed working with you and I can't wait to take all the innovation we came up with in this version and apply it to the actual version that we'll be building for the physical prototypes. And then from there, we'll probably refine it even more for the production model. So really excited. This looks really cool. Also, please hit that subscribe button to wish my dad a happy 63rd birthday.